Hi class, so in this video I'm going to be review with you transport in angiospermophytes. Remember angiosperms are flowering plants. And this video addresses assessment statements 921 through 9211. The first assessment statement says outline how the root system provides a large surface area for mineral ion and water intake by means of branching and root hairs. So Remember, a root doesn't usually look just like this. It's not one vertical column. It has a lot of little hairs and other branches to the roots. So it looks more like, like this with a lot of other branches off of the, those roots. So when you do that, you increase the amount of surface area around each branch and each root hair, thereby increasing the amount of mineral ion and water absorption from the soil. 922 states list ways in which mineral ions in the soil move to the root. So the first is, is that when water gets absorbed into the root, there are going to be ions dissolved in the water. And so you have diffusion of water which carries these ions into the root. Another one, you can have fungal hyphae associated with the roots. You can see here in this image um, the one fungal hyphae is associated with the root that's called mycorrhizae and you see this orange thing is the, my, is the mycorrhizae and you have from the mycorrhizae you have these hyphae that branch out and increase the absorption of nutrients of ions and water from the soil and mineral ions can also be absorbed through active transport which I'm going to explain on the next slide. This is statement 923 says explain the process of mineral ion absorption from the soil into roots by active transport. So remember from the electron transport chain the hydrogen ions were used to produce the ATP? Well in this case, ATP is being used to pump the H plus ions. It's the reverse process. So, and you can see that here in the center of this image, ATP becomes ADP and the H plus ions are being sent out of the cells into the soil area. Where there are these K plus ions, potassium ions, you're trying to get those potassium ions into the cell, into the root. So, the first step is that ATP gets hydrolyzed to ADP. Hydrogen ions are sent outside. So basically what you end up with is, is, is a positive charge in the soil and a negative charge inside the root cell. So, when that happens, anything that's positive on the outside of the cells in the soil are going to want to come in. So you see the K plus ions are coming in and the H plus ions are coming in to balance out the charges. You see here this the chloride counter ion is also present. So the K plus ions are going to come in inside because of this membrane potential, this difference in charges between the outside and the inside. The next assessment statement says, state that terrestrial plants support themselves by means of thickened cellulose, cell turgor, and lignified xylem. So in this section, it talks about three kinds of really tall trees, two of them which are found in North America, and one of them which is found in Australia. And if you've never been to Northern California, hopefully one day you can and see the redwoods, which I'm showing you in this image. They're amazingly large trees. So how can trees get so big? Well, they have thickened cellulose in the cell walls. So increasing the level of support and the level of mass that can be held. Um, turgor pressure. So remember turgor pressure, which is illustrated in this bottom image here on the left. When water flows into a plant cell, the vacuole increases in size and pushes out against the cell wall making the plant cell 
effectively larger. And lastly, we, you have lignin, which is found inside the xylem cells. Remember, xylem is used to transport water up a plant. And when you have these lignin, either in the ring structure or the spiral structure shown on the right, you strengthen that structure inside the plant cell. 925 says, define transpiration. Transpiration is the evaporation of water from leaves, which is right there. And the water gets pulled from the roots through the stems and out through the leaves. In the next, in the next assessment statement, 926, it says, explain how water is carried by the transpiration stream, including the structure of xylem vessels, transpirational pull, cohesion, adhesion, and evaporation. So as we said on the last slide, the image on here on the left is very similar. You ha you're having evaporation from the leaves. Now, what's happening is when, let's take a look at the image here on the right. When the evaporation happens to the leaves, there's a continuous stream of water being pulled from the root, which is shown here at the bottom of this image. In orange is the xylem, so this this blue ar these blue arrows are the water now. When the water gets evaporated from the leaf, that pulls the water up from the root. Now the reason why this stream of water is con continues to be connected is because of cohesion and adhesion. In cohesion, you have the water molecules sticking together. The water molecules stick together because of hydrogen bonding. And the water molecules also are, are adhering to the sides of the xylem, which again allows for transpirational pull. 927 says, state that guard cells can regulate transpiration by opening and closing stomata. So remember when the stomata, these holes on the bottom of the leaves are open, gases can come in like carbon dioxide, but the water can also escape. So if you can close and open the stomata at appropriate times, you can let the gas carbon dioxide in, but not let much water out. And you can see here that these guard cells, when they let water in, the, the guard cells swell and it opens. When the water flows out, the vacuoles become smaller and, they, and the guard cells shrink and the stomata closes. 9 to it, 8 says, state that, that the plant hormone abscisic acid causes the closing of the stomata. So abscisic acid is found in roots when there's not much water present. So that water, that abscisic acid gets transferred to the leaves and it causes leaves to lose the potassium ions. And when the water leaves, the guard cells shrink and the stomata close. Let's draw that briefly. So here's the guard cells when it's open. And this is because the, the vacuoles are filled with water. When abscisic acid is set to the leaves from the roots, the potassium ions escape. And when the solute concentration increases outside the guard cells, the water follows by osmosis. When the water leaves, those vacuoles lose water. They become very small. And the guard cells close.
because the water has flowed out. Because the potassium ions flowed out. The next system statement says, explain how abiotic factors like light, temperature, wind, and humidity affect the rate of transpiration in a typical terrestrial plant. So again, this image here of transpiration on the right, and there's these four factors. Temperature. When you increase temperature, the, the molecules move faster. There's an increased kinetic energy. And so the, the water molecules will actually leave the leaves more quickly. This increases the rate of transpiration. If you have an increased humidity, you have more water molecules in the air. The water molecules that are in the leaves are not going to leave as easily because the concentration difference of water from the inside of the leaf to the outside isn't as big. The water is not going to leave as easily. Under higher humidity, you're going to have a decreased rate of transpiration. If the wind blows, you're going to have an increased rate of transpiration. So when the wind blows, the water molecules in the air are moving around more quickly and, and the water molecules inside are going to be pulled away from the surface of the leaf. This is in a way similar to when you sweat and the wind blows, the water gets carried off your skin. Your skin becomes dry in that case. That's exactly what's ha happening in the case of windiness with transpiration rates. You're going to have an increase in transpiration. And if you increase light intensity, you increase the rate of transpiration because light actually causes stomata to open. And when those stomata, those holes in the bottom of the leaves open, you can lose water from the inside of the leaf. 9210 states that outline four adaptations of xerophytes that help to reduce transpiration. So xerophytes are plants that are adapted to arid conditions. So like in the desert, an example is shown here with cacti. They have small thicker leaves, reduced number of stomata, they have thickened cuticles. All of those three are preventing water loss. When you have stomata in crypts or pits or hair-like cells on the leaf surface, you are increasing the humidity around stomata preventing water loss. And the last assessment statement, 9 to 11, it says, outline the role of phloem in active translocation of sugars and amino acids from source, from the source, photosynthetic tissue and storage organs to sink, which are the fruit, the seeds, and the roots. So, when you produce sucrose through photosynthesis, that sucrose will flow into the phloem, which is the transport vessel for sucrose in the plant. When that happens, you have a higher concentration of sucrose in that phloem, and the water will flow towards that phloem from the xylem because of osmosis. That creates a pressure which forces the phloem around the plant. When it reaches the sink, the place where the sugars are going to be stored, that sucrose gets converted into starch. And that starch gets pulled out of the phloem to be stored in the sink. And then the water returns to the xylem and gets transported back up the plant through transpirational pull. So if you have any questions, please ask. Thank you. Take care.